Greetings everyone and welcome back to 365 Days of Prague. Today we're going to be listening to Pawn Heart by the band Van der Graaf Generator. Hi, my name's Naomi. I'm an avid progressive rock fan, but I'm a long ways from knowing all the Prague albums out there. But this year, I'm going to give it a try. This is 365 Days of Prague. So Pawn Hearts by Vendor Graph Generator. This is the first time we're listening to a band twice on this list because episode one was about the album God Bluff by Vendor Graph Generator. Now the first time we're gonna do a repeat is about the album that came prior to it and it is Pawn Hearts. But before I start rambling on about this album there I surely have to give you a moment to listen to my favorite bits of this album so enjoy. Pawn Hearts was actually written uh, whilst the band was doing their tour and if I'm not mistaken God Bluff came out four years afterwards and I've talked about it in that video but the band had some rough changes going through them and we're gonna talk about this more right now but this album was made with the known four member classics including Peter Hamill who's on vocals, David Jackson who's on the woodwinds and the flutes and the saxophone, Hugh Banton who plays the keyboards, the synthesizers and the bass and the amazing Guy Evans playing the percussions and drums on here. They are one of the greatest quartets to be on prog music much like Pink Floyd and other bands. Now one of the big differences if not the biggest difference between this album and God Bluff that came four years later is the fact that the band chose, well at least on God Bluff, they chose to not work with a producer anymore and they decided to produce their own music. But on this album, Pawn Hearts, they still had a producer named John Anthony which was supervising basically everything that they did and sort of led the direction this album came out to be. Now before I actually start reviewing this album and what's found on it, I have to tell you all that I've listened to the first three tracks on this album which are Lemmings, Manerg and A Plague of Lighthouse Keepers. Now I know that there are some releases of this album which include a lot more tracks on them and that's all cool and all but I usually try and keep it to the original releases on this list unless I find a better reason to actually listen to an extended or bonus tracks on a certain album. And this album is divided into two mid-length pieces, those being Lemmings and Manerg on the first side, and then you have the big long epic called A Plague of Lighthouse Keepers on the B side. And as from the music found on here, I think this music is very, very proggy. There's something about it which does not try to go all the way and explore different areas of music or prog subgenres. I think this is exactly what you think when you think about prog. Now of course there's a lot of definitions to what prog may be, but as a whole I think what they did on this album really does feature a lot of what prog and progressiveness in music really should sound like. Another thing on this album is the cacophony. If you don't know what a cacophony is, it's just a mess of sound. Everything is so all over the place but this album somehow uses that as a sort of a u unusual instrument in some way and I really really like how they just ditch the idea of symphony in order to put more cacophony into their music. And I do believe that a lot of the tracks on here have similar tropes to what's found on God Bluff but for some reason I think this album is actually more experimental and that's really funny because I would say that the band chose to not use like you know an outside producer on God Bluff because they wanted to experiment more but for some reason I feel like this album with the outside producer actually came out more experimental. And I do think that Peter Hamill actually sings better on God Bluff. I think his vocals on here are a bit strained and a bit 
like mismatched in some way but they're not bad they're not bad at all they're really actually kind of great but i just believe that something clicked better when it came to doing god bluff but i think this is the time we should stop talking about god bluff because i already did a review about that album it's on the channel it's the first video i'm gonna stop talking about this album and move on to only talking about pawn hearts so I'd have to say that there is one like really silent instrument found on this album. It's not an instrument you literally play on, it's more of a play on an instrument, if you know what I'm saying. And that instrument, to my idea, is dissonance. Something that they do on here is they take two separate elements, usually those that do not match each other, and combining them to you create some third element, some third sound or idea that is represented by that dissonance between the first two elements. Now that sounds really, really odd, but it does appear on this album. And for me, I think it was featured on all the songs, but it was featured also on my favorite song off this album, which is Man Erg. And I don't know how to explain it to you, but if you listen to that song, you probably will understand what I'm saying. And if you don't, well, I guess it's just in the background and your mind will pick it up. And I really also love how even in the quietest moments on this album, there is still a lot of energies going up. I don't know how to say it now to describe it the same as the last thing, but something about the fact that even like the peaceful parts of this album still have some sort of rhythm or at least like, you know, withheld energy within them is really, really cool. And when it comes to the conceptual side of this album, I can definitely surely say that I did not understand this album. Like, at all. I did not understand it. Like, I know that this album, I think the first song is talking about good and evil in a metaphoric way, and it has a lot of, like, idioms inside of it, and I know that the last track, A Plague of Lighthouse Keepers, talks about if I believe a lighthouse keeper that sees people dying offshore and then he's like put into this kind of psychosis or I don't know what you kind of call it and he like I think commits suicide or finds like his self-realization at the end but something about the fact that I knew what these songs were about from the beginning and I read their lyrics whilst I was listening to them and I kind of didn't feel that. I didn't understand the narrative found on here. I had a good time listening to the songs. I just think they could have done a better job at actually putting the storyline and the narratives through. And yeah, maybe it is coincidental that the only track which I do not know the storyline or the narrative of being Manerg is my favorite on here, maybe because it helped me understand it better. But yeah, this is a prog classic. I see it in a lot of top favorites of a lot of people. The cover is really, really synonymous with prog music and I've seen it a lot when researching about albums to put on this list. And with a great album comes a great cover. Now, this cover over here, it's a cool cover. I really, really like it. I love the usage of colors on it. I like the idea. In some way, it really does connect with Pawn Hearts in my idea, at least in my eyes but I kind of don't know what it has to do anything with what's found on this album. And another thing that really kind of bugs me is the text, which looks like it was made in MS Word 2003. Like, if you know what I mean, you know what I mean. It just really is kind of cringy, but it is a great cover nonetheless. And another thing I read about this cover is that apparently in the inner gatefold, which I'm showing you on screen right now, you got the band members featuring a game of Crow Bro Tennis, I think that's what it's called, which is basically a weird game they invented to pass the time while they were touring. And they just decided, you know what, heck, we're gonna put a photo of us playing it on the inner gatefold. And I think that's pretty funny and very personal of the band to do. So overall, I think this is a good album. It's really a prog trope. I would listen to it more and I hope I would like it more the next few times. But for now, I'm gonna give this album a pretty unique and actually pretty good eight out of 10. It was a good listen. I had a good time doing it. And I think if I listen to it a bit more, it's gonna grow on me. But that's about it, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this one. I hope you will all have a wonderful day and stay tuned for tomorrow because we're going to be listening to Bloom by the band Caligula's Horse. But until then, have a wonderful day and I'll catch you all tomorrow. Bye, guys.